Hey everyone, David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, coming at you from Blade Show. We're at the Hinderer booth to do an interview with Rick Hinderer himself. How are you, like, sir? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I, you know, uh, day two, Blade Show. Uh, it's a whole lot more people here than I thought there would be, honestly. Well, I, I, I kind of thought yeah. it would be a good show. Everybody's wanting to get out uh, from COVID. And uh, wow, it's, it's, it's been great. It's been great. It is excitement, so good. excitement in the industry right now so is uh, all time high. Yeah, yeah, it is good to be back. Absolutely, absolutely. So well, we got a few things here in front of us to talk about. Uh, yeah. I'll kind of let you take us through absolutely. what we've got. Absolutely. So uh, this year we're doing a lot of new stuff, Rick Hinder Knives. Um, we have a lot of pro new projects that we're going to be releasing coming in the, in the next coming, oh shoot, probably a couple of weeks practically. We got some new projects coming out. And uh, we decided not to uh, uh, to release them here at the Blade Show because honestly, you folks have been, are going to be inundated with with new, cool new projects from everybody in the industry, pretty much. Everybody waits until Blade Show to drop it, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, we're so excited about these new projects coming up that we that I decided, you know, something, uh, especially since I got a new crew in, in the booth. I didn't want to shove a whole bunch yeah. of <laughs> stuff at them. So ease back uh, into the yeah, the just kind of ease it in. Yeah, let yeah. them kind of see what the Blade Show is all about. Because if you've never been to Blade Show, the first year uh, is, is that, that you're here, it's way overwhelming. And it, if it's overwhelming out there, imagine the, the folks behind yeah. the booth. Yeah. So, so anyway, so we we backed up some of our new product uh, announcements, but we do have some uh, models here that I want to talk about. Uh, that's also new, but uh, but keep an eye on Rick and your knives uh, within from the next two weeks, next month. We got a lot of cool stuff coming out, which In you'll be able to find at the Knife Center as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. including the uh, you know everybody knows uh, that uh, what I did with knife rights and getting the automatic law in Ohio overturned for switchblades. And of course, I was working on one right away, you know, when uh, we're working on a prototype of an automatic. We'll talk about that a little yeah. bit later on. In and my mind, I'm imagining like the stroke of midnight, you're turning that first screw, aren't you? Oh, you know it. Yes. You know it. It was, uh, <laughs> I tell you what, it, it was, we, we worked on that on that bill for uh, many years. And uh, I tell you what, shout out to Knife Rights, Todd Rafter and, and Doug Ritter. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we put the work in, we got it done. And now in Ohio, uh, I can make them and people can carry them. And, and uh, it's 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 a great deal. Fantastic. It's a great deal. Fantastic. So let's talk about the first model that uh, uh, this this was a limited release. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, uh, a, a fixed blade that I did called the Emmet, and and it was uh, it's based off of my FXM. I took the FXM, which stands for fixed XM18, uh, because obviously you can see a lot see of the, the DNA in there, yeah, yeah the DNA of the XM18. So uh, what I did was I, I tweaked it. I tweaked the design and came up with uh, the Bowie. I wanted to do the Bowie blade shape first. And it works so well with the it, lines of this handle too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's a really comfortable knife. And you know, it's kind of like I, I wanted to, to, to uh, uh, make it more towards the, the hunting you okay. know, side of it, but yeah, it's yeah. such a great EDC. Uh, a lot of folks have been uh, purchased, they purchased them and and it hit huge. It hit big. Yeah, I, I yeah. was I was uh, very pleasantly surprised. Uh, obviously, Rick Hinder Knives is known for folders, and so the first twenty some years of my knife making career, I made fixed blades. You know, so right, right. Uh, so it was really it was fun getting back into the uh, into the fixed blade uh, uh, side of things, and the Emmet was a huge, huge success. And uh, well, you, you use the word comfortable too, and that was the first. My first top reaction to as soon as I picked it up, yeah. like the contouring here, it's it's such a different character from the flat side of things, yeah. and it just works yeah. so well on this handle shape. Yeah, yeah, it it uh, I made them I made them in uh, 20 CB and uh, 01. Uh, I did the 01 in a vin in my vintage series, which is 01 tool steel With the walnut and, and walnut and everything, and, and it works great. It yeah. works great on the oh, Emmet, yeah. oh, yeah. and uh, um, said both of them sold out. Uh, right away, and I and I'm like, okay, well, that that worked, that went over great. So, so you're uh, making some more. We got, we yes. have another batch coming, and uh, Knife Center is going to get a good amount of them. Excellent. And um, it's uh, so you guys get get in line for them because I guarantee you the second batch is going to go quick, and the second batch is also going to be the Bowie. Okay. But I am going to offer in both the uh, Warncliffe and a Sheep's Foot. So those will be coming up 
uh, probably this year as well. Very cool. Very cool. So uh, Kydex sheath on the, the standard? Yeah, we or? have uh, Kydex for the uh, 20 CV, and we actually have our uh, Amish-made leather sheaths for the vintage. For the vintage Those yeah. look so good. Yeah. Like, they click in almost like Kydex. Yeah. Those yeah. are really good yeah, sheaths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These Amish craftsmen, they've been working leather for, but I first started, uh, uh, first started going with them probably almost 30 years ago. And they're, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, and they look fantastic, too. They, they do it by lantern light. <laughs> they're a little bit gas. If it doesn't work, or, hey, yeah. or if, it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Something to be said for that style yeah, of living. absolutely. So the next one down the line, I want to talk about some, uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, this is the Flash Point. Mm -hmm. Now, the Flash Point we've, uh, I came out with probably four years ago. Um, but again, it's based on, it's a little neck knife based on the, uh, uh, XM18. What I wanted to talk about is these, when I reintroduced them, it kind of gained a real uh, following just like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, people almost like forgot about the price point. Right, you know? and, right. and we we made a small batch of them and, it, and they just disappeared. And uh, it's a great little EDC. Uh, we now offer uh, ulti clips in the in the sheath, in the excellent. Kydex sheath. So and, really good for pocket carrying. Oh, it's Fantastic. excellent. The ulti clip, and the, uh, give a shout out to those guys. They, they, they came up with something really great when I yeah. first started, when I first used the ulti clip. Uh, for the uh, for the flash point, I'm like, wow, that really took that to another level. Just yeah, being absolutely. able to clip that into your pocket. Absolutely. And uh, and this is uh, in the finish I want to talk about, which is the battlefield pickup. Battlefield pickup is a, a, a limited uh, a finish, a limited style that we do mm -hmm. with uh, across our models. Yeah. We'll take just a few knives and we'll do a, a a battlefield pickup finish. And what that is is almost like you know we 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 make it look like it's been laying on a field, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, and, and the battlefield pickup thing came from, you know, you're in battle, you lose your weapon, you pick up whatever's on the field, and that's what you use. And usually it looks, you know, that's why this is done with, uh, it yeah, yeah like it makes that. it look yeah. like, yeah, yeah. The battlefield pick, pickup is our, is definitely our most popular style finish right yeah. now. Yeah, so, yeah. and we're gonna be doing more of the battlefield pickup this year. And it's always real cool to see how, like, how the, the handle shape from the signature XM knives translates so well to the small size. Yeah. Like it works super yeah. well. Yeah. Even just like that three finger grip right there feels very secure. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, my design style ever, since the very beginning has been ergonomic. You know, I always felt that you don't want to work against your tool. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. your tool should be an extension of your hand or whatever you're working in. And uh, so, so a lot of my knives are uh, a, a very ergonomic feel because of that. Yeah, absolutely. Which leads us right into our next uh, our next one to talk about, Excellent. which is the Jurassic. The Jurassic is uh, a, a departure slightly from the XM18 in the in the in the style. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it, it, it you talk about ergonomics. The ergonomics on the Jurassic. A lot of people that that you know they started it, it kind of a resurgence in the Jurassic since we first introduced them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and people, they, they're, they're, they're feeling the Jurassic now, and they're like, wow, man, that locks in your hand really good. It really good. does, it really does. You know, and, and uh, so so we did, a, we, we did another run of Jurassics, and they went over huge. So we're like, okay, let's, you know, we listened to our customers. Yep. Customers are saying, we want, how about some more Jurassics? You know, when you guys gonna make more Jurassics? Been wanting a Jurassic. So this is so a model that those are you guys are going to be getting some very soon. Excellent. Uh, these are uh, just released. Well, these are the first ones off the bench. Awesome. So next couple of weeks you're going to you guys are going to see them out in the wild. Triway pivot. We're yeah. Here, uh, the 20 CV on these guys. Yeah. 20 CV triway. Uh, all folders are coming with triway now, and uh, uh, which is you know the tri the triway system is. It, it, it's pretty well impacted the knife world. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> very cool. So, and of course, like the full range of color options. Yeah, full range of color for. options, yeah. finishes. We have like, this is uh, the working finish. Yep. And uh, so we got them in the working finish, uh, battle blue, battle bronze, and we got blue and bronze uh, stone wash. Pretty much the whole the whole gamut. Yeah, I mean, the, the feel in the hand, I gotta say, I like it even better than the 18s. Yeah, I yeah. I really do. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, it's an, ergonomic powerhouse. Yeah. I mean, really, it, it really locks in. 
and the way the, the drop edge is a little bit down in your hand when you hold it, so it actually drops down a little bit more mm -hmm. than the XM18, yep. and it just locks in. It just locks in. Yeah. A lot of people that have been uh, getting them out there and getting it and really using them and using them hard, they're like, you know something, that it's, it's, it's such a comfortable knife. Yeah, it you really know? is. So, really so I think that the Jurassic this year is really going to take off. I want to mention, I just noticed, uh, both of these have two different backspacers. So the Jurassic is the knife that uh, we kind of introduced by like HMBS, the Hinder uh, Modular Backspacer System. Yep. And what it is, is you can be able to take and change different, like this has a, a regular solid backspacer, yep. whereas this one has a, like a lanyard loop. Yep. And I designed a, uh, a window punch but we don't have any of them made right now yet. But there's different different options cool. that you can be able cool. to put in. And, and as with all just available separately to yeah to yeah, yeah. yeah yeah yeah. What's with, the uh, what's the standard one out of the box going to come with? Uh, I believe the uh, solid back flush fit. Okay, yeah. cool. You know, and that's the one thing. You know, I always said, make it your own. I'm uh, I'm the only company that you can really take the knife apart and right. add and add stuff. <laughs> right. It's the AR-15 of knives. There you go. You know? There you go. Or the Jeep, the Jeep, the Wrangler Jeep of knives. You can put all kinds of stuff. In the, and the HMBS really adds to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, we mentioned right at the top. You talked about the auto, which of yes. course is going to be based on the three and a half inch XM18. Yes. They don't have any here. I, I asked him. <laughs> I asked him very nicely if he could show it to us, but they're still yeah still working on the protos. But I was wondering if you could kind of take us through that signature knife of yours and and tell us and tell them what makes it what it is. The XM18. So the XM18. That's uh, you know that really kind of put Rick and her knives on the map, so to speak. Uh, I've been making knives many many years before the XM18. The XM18 is a continuation of of uh, uh, a lot of my ideas when I was a firefighter, um, uh, outdoors person, mm -hmm. hiker, and I took all of that, and because right, the XM18 came from when I was uh, making art knives and stuff, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so I took all of that knowledge, all of that, like what I wanted in the perfect knife, and I put it in the XM18. Now a lot of people say, well, you, why'd you come up with XM18? And the, the, the name, XM18. And XM is the military acronym for experimental model. Because really it was kind of an experiment back then. Yeah. You know, can, can I be able to make this, make it, make it an affordable knife that people will buy that, that, that will take tons of punishment. And uh, 18 was my badge number at the fire department. So, uh, so it, it kind of, that, that went in and that, it, that kind of really kind of personified the, what, what, it, what it was and what, yeah. you know, what I wanted it to be. Ergonomics was big. That was the one thing that was huge uh, with me when I first started designing knives. It has the ergonomic feel uh, that you need in a knife that you're going to work with all day. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the jimping. Uh, have I, the, the jimping, uh, I have a lot of questions lately on why do I have this, the, the, the jimping on the bottom part of the knife, around the back. Yeah. The biggest thing is, is, especially being a firefighter, when you have uh, turnout gloves on, you, it's, you can't feel the knife. And one thing that you don't want to do is you, you, want it, you want it to be locked into your hand. And you want to be able to index it real exactly, easily too. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's where the jimping came from uh, on the knife all the way from back then. Sure. And uh, three and a half inch is just a really, it's a good size yeah. for, a, yeah. for a hard use folding knife. And, uh, and I, the, the thing with the uh, being a modularity, being able to change out, when I first designed the XM18, I did not design it so that you can be able to take it apart and, or not, I designed it so you can take it apart, but not to actually put well, other stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't the, uh, the initial intent. Right. The initial intent was being able to take it apart and clean it. Yeah. Because on the fire ground or uh, even more on an accident scene, you're going to get, uh, you may get blood in it or stuff yeah. like that. You, need you don't have time to think about keeping your knife safe. You need it. You, you, need you, need you need it there. You need it there, and yeah. and and that was uh, and that was paramount that, that I could be able to take this thing apart and clean it out. Yeah. Especially if you have blood in it, that's you know body bodily fluids. You have to, you have to, have to be sterilized. Yeah, yeah. So that was a big thing that that, that I, I I wanted on the knife, and um, and that was the 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 beginning, the building blocks of the first XM18 was those ideas. As I as I made the first ones and, and I wanted to make it with an open back, so mm -hmm. again, so it's easy to be able to, to wash it yep. out and everything. Yep. Uh, I went with the large 
uh, the larger standoffs than what was being made at the time. The reason is because I still wanted to handle case to be really, really rigid. And actually, I was uh, at the fire station one morning doing truck checks, and so I took the uh, the engine, and and I had to pull it out on the apron, and I'm like, huh. This would be a great test if I just put it under that tire and rolled over it. But thank goodness the chief wasn't there that day. And uh, so I put it underneath the tire of the, of the engine. I wanted to see if uh, what it would take. And, and I pulled it up and I set it there. And of course I took a picture of it yeah. and uh, pulled it back down off of it. And it, it worked just fine. Awesome. I'm like, I think I'm on to something. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention that, uh, that I added was the lock bar, hinder lock bar stabilizer. Yep, kind of a signature and element how, for you. For yes, sure. yes, yeah. how I came up with, and a lot of people have been asking, how did you come up with the lock bar stabilizer? Why did you come up with the hinder lock bar stabilizer? And actually it was a call that I was on in accidents, and, and I, I used my knife to cut the, the uh, uh, seat material. Uh, we had to cut the seat out. Yeah. And so I went and cut that, and I went to close the knife. Now. You know, you got to understand. Sometimes you're up on adrenaline a little bit, you know, on these calls. Yeah. And yeah. I could imagine. And, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And plus, you got gloves on, heavy, heavy gloves. And I went to unlock the knife to close the knife, and I overextended the lock bar. And you can do that on these frame lock type knives. Yeah. And yeah. and I'm like, uh oh, now I've got a dangerous because now the right. blade's not going to lock. Right. right. And I went back to the station. I'm like, okay, I got to fix that. So when I came up with the lock bar stabilizer, it was real easy to make it as an over travel stop. That was the easy part. Right. What I wanted to do is I wanted to actually stabilize this lock bar. Because the lock, lock bars, because of the cutout, you can be able to flex them towards the back of the knife. Yeah. And yeah. so the lock bar stabilizer, what it does is it prevents that. So when you have a really solid grip on the knife, you don't feel the lock bar flexing. Right. That's right. where the hinder lock bar stabilizer yeah. came from. And of course you see things trying to do that same thing everywhere these days. Absolutely, yeah. and, and and there's a lot of guys that are using the interlock yeah. bar stabilizer yeah. on their frame lock, yeah. so. Mark of, great, mark of a great idea right there, for sure. <laughs> Simple, but you know, a lot yeah. of the good ideas sometimes are just Sometimes are, but no, I mean, sometimes it is. Like the best ideas are the ones that are so simple, it makes everyone else go, why the heck didn't I think of that? Yeah. It really is. Yeah, 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 and it, 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 it's really, uh, like I said, it added a lot, yeah. it added a yeah. lot. And soon coming in an automatic. In an automatic. Now, yeah, the automatic awesome. is not going to have the lock bar stabilizer because it's not a frame, not a frame lock. lock. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, uh, the automatic is going to be a uh, coil spring button lock. Now, I want to add in the automatics. Uh, I was talking to a fellow last night in the pit, mm -hmm. and he said, you know something? He said, I remember way back in the day, he said, that's all you made with switchblades. So he said, you're not new to the automatic market. And I said, no, absolutely not. I, back Way back in the day, for probably five years, that's all I made was automatic knives. And it was uh, high end, this is art knives. That's what yeah. when I was making art knives. Yeah, yeah. Lever releases, I did a uh, scale release liner lock. I was one of the first ones that, uh, that did that. Uh, regular scale release lock backs, I did a lot of different. So going right into the uh, now that I can produce them, um, I, I opted for a button uh, with a spring, with a coil spring, and uh, and that's why we we went through four four prototypes because I we're dialing it in. Yeah, you know, yeah these yeah. are going to be these are going to be uh, carry the hinder lineage right on through. Tough, use just a real tough using knife. Excellent. You know, so excellent. And they're cool as hell. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and sometimes. That's all you need. That's yeah, all you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, uh, an, an X an XM18. An XM18 in a automatic. I mean, how how cool is that? I, I know everybody. It, everybody is just like, you know, can't all I wait. Say, all I say to that is yes, please. What's that? All I say to that is yes, please. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Coming real soon. You I guys. know everybody when the when the when the uh, when the law got signed or the you know the bill got signed. There, we got so many emails. Okay. I'm ready for one. When, when, they, when can I I'm like, it? oh, okay, we're working on it. <laughs> we're working on it. Uh, awesome, awesome. So, yeah, yeah, we're real excited. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a big year for Hinder Knives. Last year with COVID, it, it, it was it was a great year. Yeah. It was a great year for yeah. us. And uh, But we're, we're glad to have that behind us. Uh, we've got a great team Excellent. at Hinder Knives, Excellent. and uh, it's going to be a fun year. Awesome. Well, we'll do what we can to be part of that as well. Absolutely, absolutely. That's all the time we've got on the knives we've got in front of us here to talk about. 
Thank you, Rick, for taking the time. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching the videos. Yep. We'll Thank leave you. our links below to uh, take you over to our, uh, our Rick Hinderer page on the Knife Center so you can see what's new right now and keep sticking around for more Blade Show coverage.